Today we're going to talk about how to properly kill weeds in your lawn. Okay, so before we get into the bread and butter of this video, which is going to be how and when to control weeds, let's first talk about where weeds come from. Why do we have them in the lawn in the first place? It's a good idea to understand why they're there, so then that way we can figure out what else we might have to do in conjunction with a good chemical strategy to help keep the weeds out of our lawn in the long run. So the first reason you might have weeds in your lawn is because of natural existence. I don't care what kind of lawn you have, I don't care if it's thick, if it's thin, if it's old, if it's new, your lawn is naturally going to have weed seeds existing deep in the soil. And it's typically going to be in the poorly managed lawns where those seeds germinate. Two things I tell you if you want to have a thick healthy lawn. One of them being airflow. Airflow is key. If you don't have it, you're never going to have a healthy lawn. Second thing I tell you is make sure that your cultural practices are in line. A good example of this being the big three, mowing, fertilizing, and irrigation. If those aren't in line, then your lawn is more likely going to be thin and most likely bare intermittently throughout. And it's those bare spots where those weed seeds are more likely to germinate as they are exposed to sunlight. The second reason you might have weeds in your lawn is because of foreign material. These are going to be products like grass seed and topsoil, which is why when you watch my videos, one thing you hear me say all the time is that no matter what you're putting on your lawn, foreign or not, foreign, make sure it's clean, otherwise you're holding the risk of potentially putting new weed seeds into your lawn. In the long run, that's not going to be fun. So make sure whatever you get is clean. Now let's talk about timing. When are the best times to spray weeds in the lawn? Ideally there are two best times to hit the weeds. The first one is going to be in the fall time from mid-September all the way to early November. The reason this is a good time is because this is typically when grass and really any plant is going to stop spending its time and energy producing top growth and focus more of that time and energy on absorbing and storing energy to be used in the following year so that the plant can wake up again and grow big and strong. And the reason this is a good time is because when I say the plant will absorb and store energy, that's including the herbicides that you apply to the weeds, which means that it's going to be easier for that herbicide to penetrate the leaves of the broadleaf weed, thus giving you a more complete Kill. The second best time to spray weeds is going to be in the mid to late spring, early summer time frame. This is typically going to be mid to late May and all the way throughout the month of June. And the reason this is a great time is because this is typically when the weeds are not fully mature yet. They are still maturing. They are still actively growing, which means two things. Number one, they're obviously actively growing. And number two, because they're not fully mature, they're not going to be as resistant against herbicides as they would later in their lives when they are fully mature. Again, another great time to hit the weeds, mid to late spring, early summer, as the weeds are actively growing, you will also be able to get a better kill. So when it comes to treating a weed, or really any pest in my lawn for that matter, I like to practice IPM, Integrated Pest Management, which basically means that when I treat a pest in my lawn, I like to do it in a way that doesn't negatively affect the environment. In fact, Integrated Pest Management says if the pest that currently exists within your lawn doesn't negatively affect it or its overall appearance, then there's no need for a chemical focus more on what you could do culturally to abolish the problem. But another thing integrated pest management says is that if you're going to use a pesticide, then use it in a way that minimally impacts the environment, which in our case, weeds, the way we're going to control them is we're going to use liquid concentrate and we're going to mix it up in a hand can pump style sprayer and whatever sprayer you use, they're going to come with what is called a fan tip nozzle. Make sure that you use that. And the reason that is, is because the fan tip nozzle is what gives us a fine mist and the reason that's important is because that fine mist is what's going to help distribute that weed control evenly on top of the leaves of the broadleaf weed thus giving us that complete kill that we're going for. To sum it up, liquid concentrate, hand can pump or battery powered sprayer 
fan tip nozzle, walk the lawn in a grid, selectively spraying only where I see weeds and not where we don't. Okay, so while we're on the topic of material, let's go ahead and talk about selecting the appropriate weed control. So one thing you're gonna hear me say throughout the duration of this quick monologue here is that label is law. When in doubt, read the label as it will answer a lot of your questions. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the active ingredient. It's very important to understand the active ingredient as the active ingredients control certain types of weeds. So in our case, we're going to be looking at a Bayer Advanced product. Now keep in mind, it's going to be the same layout no matter what product you're using, brand name right here, uh, ingredients down here. That's just how it is. So we get down here, we can see that the active ingredients in our weed control, this is a typical three-way. So we have active ingredients, 2,4-D, conchlorac, and dicamba. The 2,4-D and the dicamba, those are going to control our broadleaf weeds such as the dandelions and the clover, whereas the conchlorac is going to control the grassy weeds such as crabgrass and foxtail. Another thing I like to do uh, when I'm looking for my weed control is I like to look for what are called signal words. Signal words as my good buddy Alan Hain would say. And the reason that's important is because you want to make sure that the weed control you're buying, no matter what active ingredient is in it, you want to make sure it's safe for your lawn. So what you want to look for are small copies or whatever you want to call them in the front of the product that say won't harm lawn, doesn't harm the lawn, safe for the lawn, right? You want to look for keywords like this, then that way you can confidently be aware of the fact that the weed control you're getting will kill the weeds, but not the lawn. So then while we're at it, let's go ahead and read the label. So a good thing to do, especially if you're a beginner, or really no matter where you are in your lawn care journey, it's a good idea to read the label. As like I said earlier, it will answer a lot of your questions. In fact, look right here, quick facts. Again, see how this answers a lot of our questions. And then even look right here, it even tells us things such as the weeds it kills. So it even says right here, like I said earlier, this controls broadleaf weeds such as dandelion, chickweed, and clover, grassy weeds such as crabgrass. And it also provides us broad spectrum as it controls 200 other listed weed. Let's take a look real quick. I'm not gonna, I promise, I'm not gonna be too long here. Just bear with me. Our application rate, right? How much to use? You can see 3.2 fluid ounces of this product in one gallon of water treats 500 square feet, right? So basically one gallon treats 500 square feet if you're doing a broadcast application. Now, not our primary concern because we're doing spot spraying, but for best results, spray when weeds are small and actively growing, like we talked about earlier. Heat restrictions, right? Spray when temperatures are below 90 degrees. It'll also tell you what to do as far as cultural practices are concerned if you have to perform any before or after the application. So in this case, uh, mowing being one of the big three. Do not mow for one to two days after spraying. Clippings from first three mowings should be left on treated area. Watering if lawn is dry, water one to two days before using the product. Rain or watering one hour after, after application will not wash away effectiveness. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and stop right there as far as the label goes. But again, the idea I wanna preface here is that label is law. When in doubt, Read the label on the product you're using as it will not only help you get to know the product, but it'll also answer a majority of the questions you might have going into using the product. To sum up everything we learned today, we're going to control weeds in a way that doesn't negatively affect the environment. And that is going to be to use a liquid concentrate and to mix it in a hand can pump sprayer. Once doing that, I'm going to then use the fan tip nozzle and walk the, air, walk the lawn in a grid only spraying selectively where I see weeds and not where I don't.
So that's all I have for you guys here today. I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, you're going to be dominated, bro. See you later.